you're a troller, you've paid attention to lure speed. And you've had days where you've seen a lure speed that's made a difference in how many fish you catch. Well, today we're going to take an inside look, dig a little bit deeper, an advanced look at trolling speed. You know, here at Teach and Fishing, we use our eight-step method of catching more and bigger fish. And when we do that, we put step number four as lure speed. Remember, these items are listed in order of importance. We think lure speed is pretty important. We think it's the most important part of the presentation part of the puzzle. Lure size, lure shape, lure action, lure color all come after importance. They all come after getting lure speed right. That's how important we think lure speed is. So let's take a little deeper dive into lure speed. Most of us use our speed over ground and our GPS as our lure speed indicator. And that's something we definitely want to use. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But understand what actually is going on down below at your lure. We want to really dig into what the real problem with lure speed is and what really is going on. So let's take this scenario. We're going 2.0 miles an hour uh, speed over ground. There's no current. Uh, there's no subsurface current. There's no up current. There's nothing going on. The lure is just going through the water 2 miles an hour. With no current, we're going to have a lure action of 2 miles an hour. Now, we talk about lure action because, remember, lures have a specific wiggle. The faster you go, the tighter they're going, to, they're going to wiggle. The slower you go, the less they're going to wobble. So, lure action is as important as lure speed. Lure speed affects lure action. So, here we've got 2 miles per hour speed over ground. No current. That lure is moving at a 2 mile an hour action. Now, let's take just a really light current, say a half mile hour current. Let's put it behind us. So it's actually pushing that lure forward. What happens is that lure actually slows down. It's only going through the water with an action of 1.5 miles an hour. It's a little looser, a little softer action, not digging as hard, not getting as much action. So going with the current, we are getting an action of 1.5. Now remember, the current doesn't always go the same direction as the wind. The current can be with the wind, against the wind, crosswind. So you don't always know what's going on down below your uh, down below the water at your lure. So same speed over ground on our GPS, different lure action. Let's go the other way. Let's say we're trolling into a half mile hour current. Now that lure action at 2.0 speed over ground, speed over ground hasn't changed, but now our lure action has went from 1.5 miles an hour going with the current. We turn back around. Now that lure is going two and a half miles an hour. Completely different action affecting how many fish we're going to catch. We've all seen days where we catch fish going one way and not the other. It's very rarely the direction that the fish are headed or the direction the fish are looking. A lot of times it has to do with the speed that our lure is moving, even though we think we've got it right. Okay? So using your speed over ground to know your speed and to be able to measure it and duplicate it is awesome. You should do that. I put speed over ground on all of my units so I can see them from anywhere in the boat. I like to know my speed over ground. That's absolutely critical and a piece of the puzzle that you have to know. But this speed over ground doesn't always tell us the true story. Sometimes it lies to us. Sometimes it makes us think that we are going the correct speed when in actuality our lure is going faster or slower than we're actually showing on our GPS for speed over ground. So how can we figure out what's going on down below. Well, before we talk about that, let me tell you a couple of experiences I've had with current and how big of a deal they can be. We were out just a couple weeks ago in here in Ohio for our fall fishing education weekend, and we trolled about four and a half miles in a straight line from north to south, and we caught fish the whole way. We ended up with 36, 37 fish in, in about three and a half hours. We went the same direction all day. We had our fish hawk in the water, we'll talk about in a second, and on my display, I needed to go between 1.9 and 2.0 to catch fish. We had, our, uh, we had our probe down where our lures were down about 15 feet. I had to hit that probe speed going about 1.9 to 2. Over the course of the day, in that four-mile troll, going the same direction, not changing direction, going the same direction to keep two miles an hour on a perfectly flat, calm day, to keep two miles an hour at my lure, my speed over ground was anywhere from 1.4 to 2.6. There were pockets of current that were going with us or against us as we went north to south on the same straight line. I guarantee you there were guys out there that day who caught fish, then didn't, caught fish, then didn't. We caught them the whole way because we were able to watch the probe and actually keep our speed right. So 1.4 to 2.6, that's 1.2 miles an hour difference to keep our lures in a two-tenths of a mile an hour window. 
that's a big deal. What are you guys really missing? What is the real story going on down at your lure? So, how do we keep track of our speed down at our lure? A couple ways to do it. My favorite is the new Fishhawk X2. Um, Fishhawks have been around forever. They go on big boats. They have a permanently mounted transducer. They have a probe that most guys use on a downrigger. Uh, there's a product called Smart Troll that has little probes about the size of a pen that actually go in line above your lures and they send back data wirelessly to a transducer on the back of your boat that then sends it through Bluetooth uh, to your tablet or your phone. I like the X2. Uh, basically what it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a probe that has a speed wheel and a temperature gauge on it. Uh, I get it down with a one pound or two pound ball, depending on how fast I'm going. And then I just use a short little fishing rod with an old line counter on it with a 80 pound braid on it. Now the beauty of the X2 is it's portable. This whole system packs up in a box about this big. This is, well, this big. This is the box, this is the actual box it comes in. So I can take this no matter what boat I go on. It's my buddy's boat, my boat, like myself, I have the pontoon and the polar craft. I can take it on either one of the boats. I can take it if I go fishing with a friend. I can take it down to Detroit River and drop it down. The display is battery operated, so it doesn't have to be hardwired. The probe can go on a regular fishing rod with a one or two pound ball or on a downrigger, however you want to do it. And the beauty of the system is this transducer. So this is called a slip deucer. It's got a little slot right here. You slide your, your line in here. So here's this little rod coming off my uh, Angler Quest. And there's the slip deucer. There's a line going down. The slip deucer goes on the line and then just locks on. So now this slides down your fishing line. The probe is down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 feet. This slip deucer slides down the fishing line and goes in the water about two to three feet. And then it hardwires into the back of the display and gives me temperature and speed down at the depth. A very simple way on a small fishing boat or multiple fishing boats to understand what's going on. Realize that speed over ground is a great indicator and a great duplicator, but it doesn't tell you what actually is happening at your lure. So remember our example. With the current, we're, uh, five, with a half mile hour current at two miles an hour speed over ground, our lure is going 1.5 miles an hour going with the current it's going 2.5 against the current. A one mile hour difference just based on the direction you're going. And sometimes it's not the direction that makes a difference, it's actually different pockets of current. So, if you really wanna be an effective troller, pay attention to what's going on down at your lure, you're gonna catch a lot more fish.